Korean defense is expanding globally and becoming a dominant force. And at the heart of this growth is the export of Korean naval ships. Korea has exported over 40 naval vessels so far, with HD Hyundai Heavy Industries accounting for 18 of those, holding the record for the most exports. Additionally, over the next 10 years, around 1,100 new orders for naval vessels, amounting to approximately 113 trillion Korean won or $85 billion, are expected, making it a significant blue ocean for Korea, a shipbuilding powerhouse. This marks a turning point for the Special Ship Business Unit, as they establish regional bases in the Pan-Pacific Belt and Eurasia to expand into the global market. The business unit is targeting the naval markets of Australia, Poland and Saudi Arabia, following the Philippines and Peru. In the last report on a South Korean news channel, Korea Business News, he showed the situation within HHI, or the Hyundai Heavy Industries, the progress in the construction of ships. And one of the things that aroused his attention is the second patrol vessels of the Philippines that are under construction. Let's watch this video. Behind me in the dock, the second patrol vessel for the Philippine Navy is currently under construction. At present, only smaller vessels, like patrol ships, are being exported. However, by the 2030s, once key components and equipment are fully localized, larger vessels, such as the King Zhongzhou class destroyers, could also be exported. This shift is aimed at increasing the share of exports in their business model. In the video that was shown, we saw the progress of the second Malvar class, which is currently under construction. A rapid phasing of the earlier Malvar class was launched recently, and it is expected to be delivered next year. Another good news ahead for the Philippine Navy is that according to this report on the Facebook page of Max Defense Philippines, the BRP Miguel Malvar FF06, as it undergoing testing of a piping monitoring system installed to efficiently monitor any issues with the use of an electronic system. The ship is still with HDHHI in Ulsan, South Korea. The ship is scheduled for delivery to the Philippine Navy by December 2024. Earlier than expected, that it will be delivered to the Philippines in 2025, another milestone for the Philippine Navy by chance. South Korea has become a key partner in the modernization of the Philippine Navy, providing advanced technology and naval assets that significantly enhance the Philippines' maritime capabilities. South Korea has a big role and a big part of the AFP modernization program by acquiring South Korean fighter jets, corvettes, frigates, future submarine programs and technology transfers, and many more projects are in the pipeline of the AFP modernization. Now we come to see what is the update on the offshore patrol vessels that we ordered at the HHI of South Korea. With the signing of an MOU between the Korean and Philippine Coast Guard of Maritime Security Cooperation as part of the recent state visit of South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol, among those also considered are the possible acquisition of Coast Guard ships from South Korean shipbuilders. It would be remembered that HD Hyundai Heavy Industries already made an indication of its in supplying ships to the Philippine Coast Guard, taking advantage of their wins to supply 10 warships to ply 10 warships, as well as arrangements for their maintenance by HDHHI, as well as HDHHI's plans to invest in the Philippines. The Philippine fleet can focus on building warfighting ships, including corvettes, frigates, and missile boats that are more expensive and might be lesser in quantity, but have the punch to fight in territorial defense operations. For some reason, it appears that the previous PN leadership favored the acquisition of offshore patrol vessels to replace retired assets in an almost one is to one ratio with the funds available just to make sure that the crew of the retired ships do not end up being land blabbers. But it appears that the current leadership favors passing the baton on low-intensity operations to the PCG, as there appear to be no more OPV requirements under the Rehorizon 3 phase, and plans are underway to improve the capabilities of the HDP-2200 OPV, to include capability for medium-intensity operations, including anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare operations. In addition, the PCG is now aiming to have several new offshore patrol vessels, dozens of fast patrol crafts, and hundreds of inshore boats that can be used for low-intensity operations.